What's up guys, John here. About to give you guys a rundown on the hinge system we've got uh, going on for the rear bumper on the ML430. Uh, it's pretty basic. Uh, it's something I've used in the past several times and it holds up really good. What we're looking at <clears throat> is inch and three quarter. I think this is 095 wall. Um, I used to build like rock sliders out of this when I first started, like the first set that I did. And it's a little thin, um, but it works perfect to fit these. Hopefully I can get a camera focus on this. There we go. The 203, 203 KRR2 Baron. So if you look these up, you can get them uh, pretty cheap on eBay or Amazon. I get them by the whole bag of like 20 or something. But uh, what they're really awesome at is the outer diameter fits the inner diameter of inch and three quarter 095 wall tubing. So these fit in there. Um, got this one finished right now. So you can see how nice and free spinning that is. And what we wouldn't want is the bolt tightening down on the inner bearing. Um, in this part of the inner bearing and that would basically try to push the two bearings together in the tube and that would put a lot of stress on it. So <clears throat> inside the tube we've got this piece of one inch. It's the uh, same stuff I build roof racks with. Got lots of this laying around. This goes internal inside this guy. So what it gets is welded on a, one of the bearings like so, and then the bearing gets pushed inside here, like that, and then the other bearing, boom, right there, and it's measured out perfect to where uh, when these two bearings uh, press together, uh, both surfaces, this inner surface and the inner surface of the, call it the bottom bearing, end up meeting. So that'll be there like that, and this one will stack on top like that. So there's no kind of a stress on the roller portion of the bearing. It's all inner, uh, the shank or whatever. Fuck, drawing a blank on what that's called, the race. I think that's the race. Anyways, the tension is where it's supposed to be. The only tension that's gonna be on the uh, roller assembly itself is the weight of the swing arm. So basically imagine this sitting here, this is going to get notched out to fit the round tubing. This is two by three, this is inch and three quarter. So it's going to fit up in there uh, pretty good, be able to do some gap welding, my favorite, and uh, get these surfaces nice and nice and uh, joined together. And then, um, yeah, we're going to have to build the support for it right here out of this stuff. So this guy's gonna get notched, fit to the tube, and then there's gonna be, can I explain it, a bracket uh, going horizontally off here and off the bottom, and it's gonna hold the top and bottom of this guy. So should be getting to that later this week. It's kind of a after work project. But um, yeah, I'll be getting this thing together pretty soon hopefully and uh really all that i'm short of uh, right now is the the two bolts themselves here got a whole bunch of uh lockdowns nice little assemblies those will go on and then i've got some uh some spring-loaded catches so once this is all built and everything, everything's good to go, there's gonna be a spring-loaded catch on this side and then like a triangular piece on top of the uh, the round shoulder. <laughs> the piece that I just built, the hinge, there's gonna be a piece on that. And uh, what it's gonna do is, as the swing out comes open, it's gonna lock it in a place so the, the arm won't swing back. So if you're parked on a hill or something, 
the uh, the weight of the tire, fuel cans or whatever, will be on that pin and the doors will stay open. It's the, uh, basically the update that I've got for right now. Got this one all cleaned up with a wire wheel. It's some old uh, fugly stuff. This is the last of ancient three quarter I had laying around. It's all junk, junky junk. Glad I have it, that's why I save everything. Yeah, ancient three quarter, 095 wall, and the K, oh no, 203 KRR two bearing. So if you're looking to put some hinges together, it's a really good way to do it. I'll uh, be back to show you guys what they end up looking like and probably the locking system and all that stuff in a later video. So catch you later. Damn, it's hot out. Happy 4th of July weekend to you guys. Hopefully uh, you got some time off of work to spend with the family. Um, I'm doing both. Uh, taking away a little time for myself to get this bumper done. The uh, swing out on the Mercedes. So I found a stopping point when I'm going to do is show you where I'm at and uh, some of the funky stuff I've had to come up with to make this final design a bit better uh, than the first one. Um, if you guys know me, you always see me make something and then the next one it's a little bit better. Finding the weak points, uh, strengthening that up, and uh, yeah, making it look better, making it work better. So here's what we got so far. I'm working on this side first because this is where the spare tire is going. And if I do run out of metal, um, I at least want to be able to carry my spare. Um, the extra fuel is cool, but spare is a must. Um, the fuel jug takes up less space and I can throw that inside. Uh, the spare 35 takes up a big old chunk of the space on the interior. So. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the last build, um, very similar, so using the same hinge design um, with the bearings welded in and a big 5 inch, 5 inch long, 5 eighths bolt. Uh, what's different is the post it's on. Um, ever since I've been building rear bumpers, I've used a flat piece of, uh, oh shit, call it quarter inch um, and just run it flat like this just right there because it was easier especially to marry the top the top piece it's going um, to be able to marry it to this well I'm gone a different way because I think this will make it stronger um, a flat piece um, has a lot more ability to have flex so as the as the tires riding you can see it shake just a little bit um, I think that might be due to a, a maybe weaker previous design uh, a tube has a lot more surface area when you're welding so therefore a lot more stability and it also relies on how you tie it in so with everything being tubular besides the actual cross piece here um, with everything being tubular, we're gonna have a lot more surface area to weld with and should be at least a bit stronger, if not a lot. So I am still not put in uh, the brace, the side brace down here, the lower side brace. I guess I can just call it side brace because there ain't no upper side brace. Can't weld to the body because um, we don't ever want to join the body to the frame. Never a good idea, that's why you got a rubber body mounts. Anyways, uh, back over here to this thing. The reason this isn't too good is because the rectangular uh, tubing here, I guess I should say we're not having a round tube, we're going to rectangular tube. Um, rectangular tube will hold up to bending a lot better, so with the weight on it, it's not gonna wanna flex. Uh, why not build the whole thing out of it? Be because I don't want to, it would look fucking ugly. But uh, over here to the hinge design, I'm gonna use one of my um, logos to be a stop. So when it closes, boom, it's gonna hit the logo and stop. It's gonna be, I think I'm gonna put some little gussets behind it in there. 
uh, to keep it from bending over time. Put some small gussets and then maybe just a little something right here. So when I pull down with the, uh, with the latch, it's got something solid to hit on and it's not just pulling down on the hinge. Wouldn't want that, it's not gonna be solid, it won't hold well, so. Something there, it's, it's a work in progress, that's why it's all just tacked together. And if I don't like it, it's pretty easy to rip apart. Oh, so I said I was gonna get into some, some awkward ways of fabrication that I've had to come up with. So, that upper tube, it's gonna be kinda hard to marry it into this. Like I said, I used to use the flat stock. It was real easy. Just throw it in the chop saw at the right angle and boom, I'm done. I had to kind of hold the, uh, the pre-bent piece that I had. So I put the same exact bend that this one has. It's like 70 degrees or so. Um, I already had a piece with a bend and it was probably about that long. So from here over this way and it sticks out probably here. So. Enough meat on both sides to, to play with. So I basically held in place here and kind of marked on top where this guy is. Well, that can't go in the tubing notcher because the tubing notcher has a, a clamp in it that lines directly up uh, with the hole saw. Won't work because it's going around a corner. So it ends up being way off center um, as I thought it would. So adapt and overcome right so that's the uh, the piece i was talking about that i pre-bent and yeah it worked out pretty good just went really slow uh clamped it real tight uh held on to this end by hand uh just in case it, it did catch i didn't want it you know wrecking the fridge or getting bound up somehow so yeah it's it's pretty cool. Things you got to think of uh, when you're fabricating to be able to get the job done. Uh, this could have been done another way. Uh, you can uh, do these fisheye cuts with just a normal cutoff wheel. Um, if you come in here and cut that way, you come up here and cut that way, and then round it out with a flap disc. Yeah, it'll it'll be all right. It, it'll it'll decrease the gap welding ability <laughs> that you got to come out with. But I like a real nice tight fit, so I love using the hole saws. Um, I left that grinder life behind a long time ago as soon as I got a tube notcher. And yeah, it's just 100% better to do it this way. You know the uh, you know the diameter of the cut or the circumference or whatever. It's an inch and three quarter bit, so I know it's going to be perfect to mount up to our inch and three quarter tube over here. That's where I'm at now. Um, might be time to go do the family thing again. So I said I'd leave you guys here with this. Thing's gonna be nice and lined up. Tube's gonna be on there. Uh, we're gonna have another tube here to match this angle uh, to catch the top up here. And of course the, uh, the support that's gonna run down there to the frame. Yeah. I don't know what I have left of uh, <laughs> spares, but I already covered that. I really don't think the uh, movers are going to enjoy hauling this heavy crate of scrap around. So what I'm going to do is uh, make sure all the the cuts on those are nice and flat, bevel all the edges, and I think I'm going to make one long tube out of them, uh, seam all them all together, make sure it's good and strong, and then. Uh, kind of buff the uh buff the welds down so it, it looks as normal as possible like i said this is my rig not a customer so i don't really care about you know trying to hack shit together uh just to get rid of some some spare stuff it's uh what you gotta do when i guess you're moving and can't really get in to buy more stuff so yeah that's where we're at and Again, happy 4th of July. Catch you guys later. Stay tuned for more. Like, subscribe. See you.